Yo, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm out here in the field because I've got some things to test. And, well, let me just show you what I'm testing today. This here is the Micro Studio 4K G2. And I've created this little battery bay device that holds my SSD drive and feeds the USB-C around to the side. It's also got a 12 volt back inside so that I can power it off of this little 4S LiPo on the back of my drone. And as you can see, I've got it hooked up on my Cinewhoop frame, the Halo RC Cali. And what I've created underneath here is a little adjustable mount that uses these little right angle metal brackets and standoffs. It's kind of hard to show you with the camera on, so I might cut some footage of it with the camera off. Um, but basically, yeah, this is the cleanest way I can think to do it. Normally you wouldn't power it off of a 4-cell battery, you'd have a, a Beck on your drone, or you'd just feed the power up from your drone. Or maybe you'd use the balance lead, or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to release a Beck version, or maybe I'll just have pass-through, because most people have a Beck on their drone, so... Yeah. Let's have a look and see how this goes.
Right, so back home now and I've been checking out the footage and it looks pretty good. Um, I, was, I wasn't I was too worried about running this camera on this drone setup because the all up weight of this micro studio camera uh, with a lens is roughly the same as the naked 4K and naked 6K that this frame and setup is designed for. So in terms of weight, I knew that it would be able to carry it all right. Same as with the last video where I flew on the seven inch Horus. Obviously that could carry it easily. Um, the only issue I'm find, I found that I was a little bit worried about before taking this out was that although the weight is the same, all of the weight is in one place at the front. As you can see, it's, uh, all the weight is at the front of the drone. Um, which you balance obviously by adding lipos, by adding your batteries on the back, but you need the same amount of batteries on the back as the weight of this, which would put the weight a little bit over the top for this uh, actual setup. So as you saw in the video, I was just running it with the one battery for powering the drone and that extra battery for powering the camera. Um, it was a little bit front heavy, uh, but I was really quite surprised at how well the drone flew. Um, and sorry if you hate the sound of wind and the sound of a drone, but I left the I left the audio in there so that people who wanted to hear how the drone sounded while it was flying, you can hear I hardly ever take it above 60 or 70 percent throttle. It's all quite controlled, um, and yeah, it flew quite nice. So. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the smallest, uh, the smallest and safest setup for carrying this camera, uh, I can highly recommend my own drone, the Halo RC Cali. Uh, I showed you the mount briefly in the video, um, and I'll give you a bit of a demonstration of how that works now. There's a little bolt here that you can slacken off on both sides. So you can uh, adjust the camera angle and then just tighten up the bolts. It goes from zero to 40 degrees when you fully extend it up. The other thing I briefly showed you in the video was uh, this little attachment that I made. So it uses the same mounting as an LP, LP E6 battery. So it just attaches into the battery bay on the micro studio camera and houses uh, this tiny little SSD. This is the smallest NVMe to USB-C enclosure that I could find. Uh, you can fit up to two gig, um, two terabyte drive, uses the 2230 size NVMe M.2 drive, so the smallest ones you can get. That just slots into, that just slots into the attachment there. You can see on the inside here, I've fitted a, a Beck so that I can feed it up to 6S voltage and I've got it tuned to output 12 volts over this DC jack uh, just for powering the camera. As I said earlier in the video, while I was out in the field that I wasn't too sure whether I was going to release a version with a Beck built in or if it was just going to be a voltage pass through. Um, obviously I let you know then that I am working on products for this camera to make it uh, a lot easier to use and to mount it to uh, the most suitable drones, which given the fact that it is the same weight as my naked cameras, it's perfect weight for my frames and my drone setups. So yeah, running it on the Horus or running it on the Halo RC Cali works really, really well. So I have actually heard back from Blackmagic and they have confirmed that there is an issue with the gyro data not syncing up with the video properly. Um, they also pointed out that the power button de being depressed uh, into the body is actually part of the design and so that you know that that one's the power button without looking. Which seems a bit odd when there's only four buttons and it makes it a lot harder to actually push the button in. But whatever, uh, it was their design choice and at least I know that it wasn't something wrong with my brand new camera and it was actually meant to be like that. So Blackmagic have said that they're going to fix the gyro data 
issue. Uh, so hopefully soon it will be really, really easy to uh, use with uh, Gyroflow and to and you could use it with Resolve as well if you wanted to. But using it with uh, Gyroflow, obviously it's a lot more flexible and you can do a lot more things with it and then put it into Resolve. And I've made videos on how easy it is to do with the naked 4K. And yeah, it would. That's the last thing that this camera needs to bring it in line with the naked 4K, really. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful and you've enjoyed the footage. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Laters.